goofing off. He'll give no, it to you in just a it? minute. All right, sent to you. Just tell me what it is. Miss. I have to go look at it. All right, you two. Be nice. Jen Lee? J N. Right there. Oh, boy. Choke him out in 30 seconds flat. Very bad. I'm going to take a selfie. Hold it up. Send him a request. I need Wi Fi. We have Wi Fi, don't we? Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Show password. Guys, 
don't like her. She smells like cheese. Who? Belmondo. Who's Belmondo? <clears throat> Who's Belmondo? I need you guys. Who's Belmondo? Uh huh? What the hell is he talking about? Belmondo. What's that? Who's that? Oh, okay. Belmondo is like my. Come on, my nutsack cheese. <laughs> Or from under your toes, or work all day and scratch up and remember the funk he said. Oh god! Oh god! You guys ready? Did she say? Is she ready? Watch me put clothes on. Is that what she said? comes here, she she gets all dainty, waits up front, sits there, asks for permission. When I get here, I kick doors, oh, open, <laughs> open, pretty does much act like a... Does he understand who he is? Pretty much act like a... Is in this own this place. I knew this was going to be fun. I just had no idea how fun this was going to be. Alright. I, I can't even get a straight answer. Okay, this would be the straight answer. <laughs> Ordinarily, when an animal gets injured, Missy's got this whole... Uh, um, how to put this? 
Yeah, and, you know, it's an intake process, but I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole myriad of people all over the coast that, come, that, that communicate with her, and whenever there's an animal down, they would text her, and, and you can correct me when I'm going to get there. Oh, I will. You know I will. And anyway, so point being is through this whole myriad of, uh, and this conglomeration of people, she'll actually have the animal, you know, at, and at her place. Sometimes they come and get dropped off directly here. Sometimes they go directly to Missy. Um, I have known Missy for years, and she was once one of my technicians, so I have taught her how to triage these animals and get them to the next point. And if I need it after she sees them, then she'll deliver them up there, either back through that myriad or her deliver them herself. Or if they're here, and then we ended up, you know, well, like, for example, Tomahawk. <laughs> Tomahawk was one of those ones that we'd seen. Well, did you see Tomahawk before I did? Okay, anyway, I thought, Tom, I thought I saw Tom Hawk first, but I, I've been corrected. Anyway, the point is, is how to put this, the, the whole coast has been working with us, and this is just one of those things that we've been doing now for over 10 years. So I, I'd, like, I'd like to share this with the world. So it's expanded almost to the top of the state. It's awesome, and I can tell you that we looked through, oh God, maybe 200 rescue agencies, and we found over 
He's got eight. Uh, I can answer for myself, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Well, they were my kids at once, too. So <laughs> I can answer um, that. I've got, I've got a 20 year old son who's in the Air Force. Um, he actually went into boot camp the week I retired from the military. Um, <clears throat> I've got a 16 year old daughter and a nine year old son. He's trying to act too sexy right yeah. there. Jeez. This is why we're out there. And do they live with you guys? Well, no, the ones that are old don't live with you yeah. guys. But like, do your kids live with you? Do they live with their other parents? They live with me. I'm I'm a single dad. And he rocks at it too. Not a lot of guys get full custody of their children, and he did. That's a lot. Yep. It's amazing. The shop collars are just more. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. Look at that looks stupid. And so, are the kids ever involved at all? Yeah, um, like this morning, Troy was with us when we did a release um, on our live video. Uh, they're in school a lot, so in the summer more, they get involved. And now my daughter's 16. Or do they feel like they have to do it? Oh, they love it. Yeah. Yeah, they'll... Um, Especially like Addison. Yeah. Well, my daughter, typical 16-year-old girl, she's teetering from... Wanting to be a teacher, brain surgeon, veterinarian, counselor, whatever. So she's, you know, in and out of things of how she wants to, you know, whether she's interested or not. But um, my son, uh, he'll come in, help with stuff, and then he'll be over it, go play, come help. But if I need him to do something, he's jumping right in there. And he tells all his friends about it, right. you know, about what he gets to do. Here otherwise. I'm an atheist. <laughs> I wouldn't be here otherwise. Here he's back. 
I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. You gotta make a sandwich again. I don't have a problem with religion. Don't I know I saw that grimace face, but I, I just it's just my thing. I But he sees I'm a science guy. But he understands when he sees what I'm talking about, it blows his mind. It, it truly does. Because it's it cost about sixteen thousand dollars to run the rescue and That's the, bare minimum. Yeah, that's bare minimum. For a year? No. Yeah. Yeah. For the year. Because we are <laughs> because we just don't have the funds. We make do with what we get. And and the amount of animals that are coming in and receiving our services and good quality care is pretty amazing to do to see what we work on with barely nothing. And does the county not provide this kind of service? Really? The county provides animal control, which is dog, cat, whatever, and then they bring us the wildlife. And then we, we have such a great rapport with all of the different um, animal control officers, but we get no funds from them. Yeah, we get a lot of uh, attaboy support, but uh, but no funds. Yeah, the state receives a bunch of research from everything that we do, but I mean, we don't get paid at all. We're hoping you can change that. <laughs> what did you say? We're hoping you can change that.
I just wanted to clear that up so I didn't say anything. <laughs> what was it? Good God. I just burped a burrito. Don't yeah. show anybody. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's on the floor. <laughs> oh I can't God. believe I looked. And here's the thing. We so, have... so I need to know very specifically, and if this means you have to get back to me and tell me later, you don't have to tell me right now. I think you gave me the names of the other production companies that you talked to. Was I wrote you down. Uh, intuitive? And what was the first one? Yeah, and also... Oh. Bright Sparks Films, if you've seen the teaser that they did, um, have you seen that one yet? Okay. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to have her send you that. Bright Sparks Films tried first with Nat Geo, and, uh, and they weren't interested, and then they traveled the Animal Planet, and as of an email I got this morning, uh, they don't blame me for looking at other options, so, uh, you know, but they took, they took all the stuff off off the YouTube channel. They didn't come down here and videotape anything themselves. They just used my YouTube channel to get what they got. And that's just a drop in the bucket of yeah. what we do. Anyway, so that's, again, that's Bright Sparks. They don't have to know all the companies you work right. with. Uh, Phil Viardo out of, uh, out of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. He's doing wildlife docs. He's also shown some interest, but I've not heard from him in a month or more. High Noon Productions is another one that contacted the rescue. Yeah. Can you write this all down for me, Missy? Yes, absolutely. We have not moved forward. The rescue, see a lot of people approach Dr. Rescue about a veterinarian show, and he wants to tie in what we do, and with us, the people that have contacted us, we've always wanted to tie him in. It's always I been- I am on the board. Right. Yeah, it's it's not not <laughs> are, you, are you two done? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All we, the time. <laughs> you got me? Okay. So, I know, it's these two. I'm sorry, they're not professionals. <laughs> <laughs> you please play no, poker, you're on my But time. everything has been... Only because, we, only because we have to know if... Here's the thing, I'm going to be wildly honest with you right now. Okay. Because I know you have Exactly. Right. Yes. 
See, Wallet Hart hasn't got there yet. It's good for me to know how specifically people were shopping you around. Outside of what I've told you, I know no more. Just that they were, they pitched to Animal Planet, they pitched to Nat Geo, and that was Bright Sparks Films. I'll, uh, I'll forward that link to Missy and she forwarded it to you. It's, it's a cute segue, but it wasn't, it didn't show off anything that was here. Okay.
to watch him create. I forgot about that. Case. Yes, to watch him create something that's going to save these animals. Now the problem that I have with him is he don't like to euthanize anything. <laughs> hey, tell the frog story. Oh, and I have a horrible fear of frogs, and this clown decides to put a battery-operated motion sensor frog under the, the chair. So when I walk in for work, this dog starts chasing me, and I'm having a nervous wreck. I'm running from when he's running down the hall laughing. I'm about to trip over everything. So this is how we do. Amazing. Both of these, and, and really and truly, um, these two I trust with my life. They would do anything for anybody, and these animals are their top priority. So that's, that's just how that goes. I'm not going to describe myself. You have to. I, I can't describe myself. Just do it. You have to do it because I don't. Can you do it? I don't know. You about have, oh, I'm going to tell them all about your Tourette's and everything. I have no Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. No, I don't have Tourette's. Okay. Ask you is crazy. <laughs> he makes me have Tourette's. I, I don't, don't have Tourette's. <laughs> you, I swear to God. Right, listen, listen, listen. It's okay. She's on the timeline. So, I all you're going to do is explain your passion for it. Okay, let me just tell you how. Because <laughs> you wait, I know you have passion for animals. I can tell that. You don't have to tell me about that. But if, if you take animals out of the picture, who are you? There you go. Gosh. I'm I'm, yeah, I'm a mom. I'm a grandma. Um, I love to cook, bake. <laughs> yeah, I love to cook. I love to bake. I, I can bribe people really easily like that. Um, <laughs> I just feel that, 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 you know, I've been given a chance at life to do something to make a difference because I was not given that future as an infant baby. And I just take this and I just run with it. And I think that's why I, I have such a passion for the children too, bless you, because so many of those children are underprivileged. I grew up very poor, very underprivileged, and, and they're overlooked a lot of times. And I feel like I want to make a change in their life, and I think we're doing it. Yeah. You know, some kind of way.
animals. That's her credo. And I respect that wholly for her. Now, Dr. Askew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can take it, bring it on. <laughs> All right. When, whenever I met Missy, I met Missy. Um, 2012. Look at your fingers. Oh, I was. All right. Tell what you were doing. Stop. I'm. This is my turn. <laughs> the pecans are starting to be ready down here. And when I was cutting lawns, we found a tree that had a whole bunch. And some of the green ones, if you just feel them and the, the husks are starting to split, you can pull them off and get a good pecan. Well, the juice from those husks stains your hands. Oh, really? Wow. So. <laughs> He's lying. He had his hands in his pants a minute ago. <laughs> I know. I, I know. You guys are trying to do this thing, and they're right. Okay. Well, I met uh, Missy 2012. 2012, and I was in the military at the time. 2011. And 2011, and um, I was coordinating Earth Day for the Navy base down here, and she was uh, she was invited with her rescue that she was with at the time before she opened Wild at Heart. Um, long story short, I was interested in what she did, I had the same kind of views and passions that she has towards animals, and once she opened her own place, I was able to help her a couple times, and I really got kind of, it's almost like an addiction, you just do one rescue, you can't, you can't help it, you just have to go do it again, because the adrenaline and the feel-good feeling that you have, even if you have to euthanize the animal, because it's not suffering anymore. Now. I was able, since Dr. Askew and her have known each other for so long. <laughs> Anyways, um, they, uh, Dr. Askew, <laughs> Dr. Askew works with her and does all this pro bono. Um, we pay for as much as we can, um, but they know our situation and they help us out with everything that they can. And meeting someone, I always call my brother from another mother because we have the same personality. And he's just an amazing, he, he's an outside the box thinker. And nowadays you have so many people that are so straightforward and straight laced that they have to do everything the way it's been. If it's not broke, don't fix it. What's wrong with finding something that is maybe an easier way or a better way for the patient? And that's what he does. And that's what I, I really, enjoy about being around him and I learned so much from him. Damn, that gotta be nice. Yeah. <laughs> now, now tell me, are you a vet tech? No. So um, your credentials are I'm, I'm a self no, I'm self-proclaimed astronaut. Um <laughs> no I am yeah. I'm just a farm boy that grew up in Michigan and right. uh, whenever I grew up it there was three T V shows, there was no internet, so out in the woods and in the weeds was my sanctuary. Yes. And Does it matter that you, you need credentials for any reason to do this kind of work? You just need to be permitted by the state and the process for getting your permits to do this, I mean, you have to work underneath somebody. I don't have permits. I am under Missy's permit. All of our wildlife works under Missy's. Now, everybody on our Facebook wants us to branch out to their states because they don't have a service like this in their states. And eventually, hopefully, we'll be able to do something like that. Right. But right now, there's nothing in the works like that. But at that time, then you'd need somebody that would be permitted in that state. And we, it's just everything is the guidelines we have to follow. And it's the hard yeah, part of it. Like, if it was Arkansas, you'd have to find a vet tech in Arkansas who would want to be the, for lack of a better word, the umbrella that other people could work under because they would have the permit. No, it, you could. I mean, I could apply for a permit, and if I get enough, you know, people saying, you know, references stating that I'm capable, then the state might approve me for a permit. But you don't have to be in the veterinary where you, it definitely helps to have a relationship with a veterinarian that will work on wildlife, because not all vets do that. So it doesn't sound like it would be hard for you to get a permit? I mean, I, not really, but I mean, everything, come on, sir. Here with Missy, I mean, if I ever decide to go back home to Michigan and open up, like, say, a Raptor Center or something like that, I would probably, Missy and I would work it out where it would be an extension of Wild at Heart, but I would need my own permits at that time.
Well, I mean, here's another thing that we do too is like we go to different um, educational things. Like we'll go to the wildlife, uh, the, where do they meet every year? Conferences. The conferences. Um, we we're able to network that way. There's different things like that to where that might happen. And I mean, The hardest thing is doing a rescue and walking away and wondering if you could have done more when it wasn't successful. Or like, for instance, a possum. Um, say you have a mother possum that's hit by a car and they're a marsupial. So you've got baby possums. Right. What if you only find three? And you're walking away after you've exhausted yourself looking for these babies, and you're walking away, and in the back of your mind, you're like, what if another one's just looking at me, and I missed it? That's the hard part. And rehabilitators getting another It's my turn. Hush. She just said what Hush, it's my turn. Part. Shh. Uh, <laughs> finding rehabilitators is another thing. I'm just giving her grief. <laughs> Always. Um, finding a rehabilitator that will truly rehabilitate the animal as wildlife and not as something that they could put on Facebook to be cute. That's hard. And finding, just finding a way to educate people who are hard headed and think, like for instance, Dr. Askew and I have a passion for venomous snakes and what they do for our ecosystem. Now a lot of the mentality of people is the only good snake is a dead snake. It's so untrue. And that's, that's kind of a difficult thing that we deal with. Um, so you guys rehab to a certain extent, but then sometimes or often you have to pass it on to a special rehab person, is that right? No, nope, we're, we're the whole shebang. Um, the thing with Ellis... Is- 